position or a half halt because he's not ready to do something, don't feel like you have to, it's not a test. You don't have to blast through something that doesn't feel right. Yeah, exactly. And then a few strides straight, and then a right 10 meter circle. Move back. Absolutely fine too. 
but if his trot is going to gain any higher marks by putting some trot work at the end, we're again stacking the cards in our favor that the judge will have a good first impression and a good last impression. Where your circle is, okay. it's going to be easier for you to sort of map the 
thing out in your head if you use the letters as a guide to it. So you want to think of your circle on the first serpentine as being right as you would call it. Okay. And that will center your serpentine as well. Okay. And what advantage to adding a circle is that then you don't have those downward transitions and upward transitions too many in too short a distance. It gives you a little time to de develop the canter in the lead you've just changed to before you change back. They don't come back in the corner, they're behind, they're all in, and 
break into crop. So if you only have one, then you can focus all your energy on doing a really good job with that one. If you're not likely to get more than a six and a half or a seven four, there's no, no reason to do it. Um, so what I would say is it's be likelier to do the lengthening, because if we do walk after the canter lengthening, that might not be the easiest to bring it back. Maybe you can do the canter lengthening at the end of the second mm -hmm. piece of canter when you're actually just coming back to the cross. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So here's what we're going to do. We haven't, we haven't done anything with the walk yet. We'll come back to that. I generally plug the walk pattern into the choreography once I've got the big piece of the trot and the canter work.
So in those big transitions, I usually, especially cancers a downward transition, I'll usually say between this letter and this letter, do your downward transition. And that way the rider is thinking more about, well, anywhere in that space, or even after. If I'm ahead of my music, I just keep on cantering. Okay. Or maybe I come to trot and slowly back to walk as my music change, transition. By the time you ride a freestyle competition, you'll know the music. You'll, you'll, just, you'll have memorized it, you'll know how much music you've got left. And unfortunately, what happens in the heat of the competition is if you're two seconds ahead of your music, it feels like an eternity. But it's only two seconds. And if you just sort of relax and wait for the music to change, you can always make a little adjustment to the geography of whatever comes next to repair the fact that maybe you were a bit ahead of the music or a bit behind. The first part of Because it's putting it fairly close to the judge on the straight line. Okay. And then you would pick up your cancer at eight. 